retiring from footy um, must have been a huge change for you. Look, it was a big change. Uh, I, I suppose for me, the natural progression was to go coaching. Um, nothing beats playing, I'll, I'll add that. I had 17 years as a player with the Hawthorne Footy Club, but when my time to, uh, to retire came, I, I knew when that time was. I then was an assistant coach the year after for the Hawks in 1986, a premiership year, when the Hawks defeated Carlton in the 1986 grand final. So I was an assistant coach selector, which gave me a good grounding under Alan Jeans. And then I became the inaugural coach of the Brisbane Football Club. We were called the Brisbane Bears. So for me, going from a retirement as a player into coaching was a natural progression. It was the next step to staying involved, uh, pretty tangibly involved. But it was very, very different coaching, um, worrying about so many other factors other than yourself. And you know, it, it required a, a huge transition, there's no doubt. There must be a lot of, well, obviously responsibility, but a lot of pressure that does mm. come with that. How did you actually cope with the, with the pressure that was, especially with, say, a new club that, yeah. that was opening up, with all its teething problems? Yes, you're, you're exactly right. Um, starting a new club from, from base, from, from afresh, uh, not many people get the opportunity to do that. So that was exciting. But yes, a lot of responsibility, um, a lot of pressures go along with that. And look, no doubt in those early years of my coaching career, it would be difficult to say that there weren't frustrations. You get very frustrated as a coach in the early years because as a player, you can do something about the situation yourself out on the field. Even if the side's not playing well, you can do something about it. But as a coach, sometimes it's, you feel frustrated that you can't do anything about it. You can offer some suggestions, some advice, make some changes from the coach's box, but tangibly you can't do anything out there so those sorts of pressures and frustrations you find difficult to cope with a little bit but then you've just got to step back and settle and take on advice from others that uh, can give you that sort of advice and uh, and I was lucky that I had mentors around me that could give me that sort of advice so that I could step back and settle and try and erase those frustrations but look I, I think I was very fortunate that family was always very, very close in those coaching days when frustrations were upon you that I also made sure I had an outlet um, to be able to get away, even though being an AFL, VFL coach, full-time coach as, as I became, you need to have that outlet. You need to be able to sit back and relax and realise that it's not the be-all and end-all, making sure that you've got a few other interests and no doubt family is the most important backstop that you can always go back to and they're always there. There, I think a lot of people out there would like to know what you're up to these days, what, what's happened since, since your football playing days. Well look I've been back at the Hawthorne Football Club now in an administrative role for 10 years so 17 years as a player. I had uh, another three years as a coach of the Hawthorne Footy Club uh, amongst coaching other teams as well and now I've been back for 10 years in a commercial operations role. So that's 30 years directly involved with the Hawthorne Footy Club. So I'm very, very fortunate to be back at the, full, back at the footy club in a full-time capacity. I also do a little bit of coaching outside of uh, the Hawthorne Footy Club. Uh, I've got a young family that I try and play dad to as much as possible. So no, no doubt my life is very busy, combining both work for the footy club full-time uh, I'd still love to commit myself to family, being a taxi service to my, my daughters and taxiing them to their sport, uh, to, to watch their sport and mix the two. And then try and find a little bit of time myself just to relax and enjoy things like going for a bike ride or going for a walk with the dogs. Uh, only a very occasional jog nowadays. Uh, I, I just enjoy working in the garden um, and doing the things that most middle-aged men like to do because I feel it's just so important to try and get that balance when life is so busy and, and work is, you, you need to commit yourself to work so much. Well, it's been a pleasure, Peter. For, thanks for coming. Thank you very much, Tony. Um, and I might even get you to sign that uh, <laughs> record for my little boy a bit later on, if, if, if you wouldn't mind. Absolutely. Okay, what we normally say is, till next time, Shedders. Okay. Until, Until next, next time, time Shedders. Shedders.